Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you are not new here. I'm Marielle. Today I've got some ginormo lashes on. I feel like they are actually impeding my vision. Um, there is a storm happening outside so I also can't see because of all the lights that are on me. I just put on this lipstick from Gucci called Three Wise Girls, which I hate. <laughs> and then I talked it with the Indulge in It gloss in case anyone wanted to know. But this video is about the things that I loved in the month of October. There's a lot of different things. I've got a whole list here to get through. <laughs> so without further ado, let's jump into it. Speaking of these huge ginormo lashes, which are about to help me lift off and go to outer space, how much do we think these lashes cost, these 3D mink lashes? Because I picked them up at the dollar store and I'm obsessed with them. They are a little bit hilariously large and especially in person, it looks absurd, but they do open up my eyes really well and they are delicious and fluffy and tapered and very, very like layered and poofy. So. Even though I am obsessed with them and I purchased like six or eight pairs, maybe because I was like, what a seal. Um, I can't call them a favorite yet because I haven't actually tried out all the different styles. But let's start first obviously with makeup and personal care and then we'll move into lifestyle and other stuff. First things first, I have to mention as a personal favorite, the new hair. I mean, are we loving the red velvet realness? This is like day two or day three hair and it's still looking really nice. I mean, I have a problem of having like a flat hair here and dandruff lately. I don't know if that's weather or if it's the shampoo products I'm using. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that later. Um, but part of the problem with having my hair like this is that my roots are still really greasy because they're really black and then the rest of my hair is really dry. So I am looking to get my hair highlighted again because keeping my roots nice and highlighted keeps my hair from needing to be shampooed all the time. I just, part of being blonde or pre-lightened is the brilliance of only having to wash your hair every four to six days. It's fabulous. Um, and I don't regret it at all. Uh, it's just that like I, I need to go get my hair highlighted again, but I'm thinking that I have to wait until the red um, kind of lightens up a bit so you can tell the difference between my black hair and the red hair. However, I have to say the whole vibe change from a really kind of outdated, overgrown, brassy, not super styled blonde, it very, very clearly looked like my hair was just a blonde with a toner rinsed out, which is it, what it, that's what it was. It wasn't like I was going for a look. Um, if anything, it could have been like a mossy, chartreuse yellow, like kind of a pukey, untoned, brassy yellow. I just didn't think it was cute at all. I know I got some compliments. I think it's because you guys are nice. Um, but to a trained eye, it definitely just looked like a bad hair color. Um, and especially because the bottom part of my hair is solid. It's solidly bleached. And then the midsections of my hair are baby lighted. It just, it didn't look super good. So when I went at it with a box dye. It cost me $12 and I could not be happier with the result. I feel like it is much more nuanced and dynamic and actually the fact that I have the highlights and the lowlights makes it much more interesting. Like the contrast between the really dark pieces of my hair here and the really light pieces at the front actually looks more intentional and kind of like a beta fish. I feel like it's it's actually nice how unprofessional it looks. It just looks a little, a little bit more dynamic. There's like darker pieces here, a really light piece here. It almost looks like the bright red is kind of like a natural face framing money piece or a highlight. And I actually just really like how it turned out. The only thing is with adjusting to the new red is that my wardrobe had to be adjusted. So not that I bought new things per se, I just took out a lot of stuff. So I took out a lot of color. I replaced it with a lot of black, a lot of grays, a lot of taupes. Um, uh, colors that I did include were all cool toned. I find that because this is a very cool toned red, it maybe can lean neutral, but it's very much so like a, a cherry kind of like vampire bloody red and that's what I wanted to go for. So I'm going for cooler toned colors, like navies are okay, dark aubergines are okay. Um, browns are looking good. I kind of like the brown black situation, but definitely got rid of like the corals, the pinks, stuff like that. I just find that it's a little bit harder to wear. I say that with like a pink eye, but I've been loving the red hair. I really like how confident it makes me feel. I like how striking it is um, tons of compliments at work <laughs> so clearly I mean it, it doesn't impede me in the quality of the work that I can do I do know that not every workplace is super lax or you know they may be actually like ob obstructively strict um, but I work as a public school teacher and no one can talk shit about me and the work that I do because I do a pretty good job uh, managing my classroom and my students and they all perform really well and you know I don't really think that having colored hair changes 
being like, I don't think they're gonna fire me over this. So from what I can from what I can hear uh, in the community, it's been a hit. I was really nervous to do it because you know I don't know. You never want to like do a really drastic change because sometimes it can be really scary. But I had great compliments, and part of it has been amazing for my ego. Part of it has been fun just to change things around. I think what I've learned about myself is I really can't go longer than a quarter without doing something different to my hair. So whether it is getting more highlights, whether it is completely changing the color, whether it is cutting it or styling it or extensions or what have you, I really can only go for three months before craving something new and I love it. And I feel like because it's a temporary color, it's going to rinse out and when it's like faded and ready to go, I'll just use a direct dye remover and then we will go from there and see what I want to do or if I want to keep it. I mean, I think it's pretty pretty badass if I say so myself. Okay, so that wasn't really like a favorite favorite. I will say that the splat hair dye that I used is beautiful. I love the color. The problem with it, oh my gosh, I just realized that was here this whole time. The problem with the splat hair color is that every time I wash my hair, it just leeches everywhere. And also when it rains, I leech everywhere. <laughs> so I always carry an umbrella with me because otherwise um, my clothing will definitely get ruined. My blankets and pillows and towels and all that stuff, it's always like a little bit of a safety hazard. And yes, I do have to bleach my tiles every time I get my hair wet. That being said, I'm almost positive that's the case with any red coloration, especially if you're doing a semi-demi-permanent because it is just kind of a, it is kind of just a migratory hair dye. Like it's going to get everywhere, it's going to be messy, um, but I think the outcome is cute and my hair actually looks really nice and glossy and shiny. And I haven't put any product in it, by the way. So, um, yeah, I feel like having the red looks a lot nicer than the blonde in comparison. All right, the first real makeup product I have been absolutely loving is the Moon Spell Palette. I'm not wearing it today. Um, so that's not what's on my eyes, but in terms of color story, this has been absolutely phenomenal. I've really enjoyed digging into this. You can actually see, we don't know how well it's showing up, but I really have been enjoying some of these colors and especially the, I don't know, what, what has been interesting about this palette for me is that it doesn't seem like it is a staple palette right from the get. One, because it's really bold and two, because the formula of these shadows is a little bit dry. It doesn't feel like the Pat McGrath Utopian Dream, which is what, what is on my eyes today, it feels wet. Like when you rub your finger into the palette, um, this action of like digging into the shadow, it feels moist. It feels like there's some kind of like water content in there. And the Lunar Beauty shadows are pretty dry and dare I say dusty, like to the texture. But on the skin, you get this incredible foiled, ultra creamy, ultra pigmented, like very, very metallic, blendable. Its performance is very surprising on the eyes, and I think that's why I keep coming back to this palette. And when I say coming back to a palette, I don't mean, oh, I used it like three or four times in a month. I mean, I used this probably 14 or 15 times in a month while also doing Project Pan, while also filming other content. It is something that I have reached for repeatedly and put into Shop My Stashes, Project Pans. Like It has just found its way back into my collection over and over and over again. Um, because of time, yes, obviously, because of topic, obviously, but also, you know, the color story and the formula has just surprised me. I mean, the number of duochromes and interesting metallics, especially like Zelda, what a surprising, interesting berry shade. It is just so unexpected, so creamy, so beautiful. I mean, I just didn't expect a lot from this, I guess. I really, especially after touching it, I really didn't expect it to be as creamy and dynamic and interesting as it is. And I'm sorry, uh, Manny, if that was me insulting your brand, but it really did blow me out of the water. I think it is just, um, you know, I, I think Pat McGrath and Natasha Denona, those brands have a certain reputation to uphold. And so when I get one of those products and it's as good as I expect it to be, it's not like surprising for me. So this was a pleasant surprise. I really loved using it. Another rather pleasant surprise for me was falling back in love with my Paula Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense. This was a sunscreen that I was using for a while and then I found it a little bit expensive and I stopped using it, but I still had one auto ship that ended up getting sent to me and I just decided to start using it as not only a base for my makeup, so sometimes I'll use this as my main base, sometimes I'll go back to just using my Super Goop. Um, but what I really have enjoyed this as is a mixer. So what I'll do is I'll take a little squirt of this and I'll take a little squirt of my CC cream from e.l.f. which is too dark for me and I'll mix it and it turns into this beautiful base product with a pretty boosted SPF. Um, and don't tell anyone but that's kind of on some days that's what I use as SPF because I think it's fine. I have like the, the 35 from the e.l.f. and the 30 from here and you mix it and you use, I mean I use a good like two pumps total, you know like two full, I mean it's no a quarter teaspoon, but maybe it's like an eighth of a teaspoon. I mean, it's it's fine. I'm definitely getting enough coverage on my face, and I really liked it. Because this product dries down with a semi-matte finish, it feels like a foundation that self-sets. It's not like one of those sunscreens that moisturizes the skin and then kind of stays slippy and tacky, and um, even with the Super Goop one, which is a silicone texture, it doesn't really like 
polymerized. It doesn't like fully set and dry down. Whereas the Paula's Choice, if you put it on your face and you kind of wipe it, your face is going to be pretty pretty dry. It's actually going to feel maybe a little bit tight if you are someone who has a little bit of dryness. So I've liked that a lot. Um, yeah, that's been, that's been a positive experience for me. The next thing that I've liked is the Curology Moisturizer. Now this is interesting. When I first tried Curology, which I'm still on, um, my dermatologist didn't send me an updated version of my formula, so I paid for a bottle that is not necessarily like the newest formula that I had asked for, which that's annoying. Um, but when you first try Curology, the sample you get includes the cleanser, um, it includes the formula, and it includes a little pack of the moisturizer. And let me tell you, I've never tried a moisturizer that I actually like to use at night. I have oily skin that is likely dehydrated, um, but that doesn't mean that I want to slather oils on my skin. Even when I'm dry, I don't want to have stickiness, goopiness, I just really hate the texture of anything sticky. Like that dewy, plump, wet, like fully moisturized, hydrated feel that like everyone says is all craze. I hate that. That's also why I hate cream products. I hate anything emollient. I hate anything dewy. I hate anything hydrating. Not to be like annoying, <laughs> but water gels and water creams they still leave that like bouncy feeling on the skin, which I know is what means that your like skin cells are being hydrated and osmosis and all that stuff. Ultimately, I try to rely on my natural hydration, like to really, really hydrate my skin cells. Um, I drink a lot of fluids, I drink a lot of water, um, a lot of tea, and I hope that it's enough. Like my hydration levels seem pretty high. Um, and I try to use other ways to hydrate my skin, whether it is masks, whether it's treatments, serums. Like I can do a bunch of layered serums, I can do toners. I just can't do that sticky, goopy moisturizer feeling. It's the same reason why I really don't like lotion. But long tangent aside, the Curology moisturizer is very, very nice. It's almost like very silicone-y and I know silicones are great at locking in um, moisturizing agents uh, and it has moisture in it. I checked the ingredients. I think it has glycerin. I mean it has some really great humectants but it doesn't have that like goopy, sticky, occlusive quality that most lotions have and certainly not you know those dry heavy duty moisturizers. All of those are goopy and, and insufferable to me. On top of that, um, the mechanism is really simple, just like the pump. I just, everything about it is very, very pleasant. It's very light, very airy. I just do two pumps and it's so pleasant that I actually can bring it down my neck and my chest, which I almost never do because usually you get that like goopy, sticky feeling. And if I cannot lie face down on my silk pillowcase and enjoy its cooling sensation on my skin, then I don't want it on my face. You know what I mean? And so what's amazing about the Curology Moisturizer is that it fully soaks into the skin and then it's undetectable. And when I say undetectable, I don't mean like you don't even know that it's on. In fact, it leaves your skin feeling like primed and moisturized. Like it feels not sticky and not wet, but really smooth because of the silicones. So I, I love the moisturizer. If I had more of it, I would use it in the morning too before sunscreen, um, but it's just not necessary. Uh, but for nighttime, it's really been a game changer for me because it's been hot uh, with the heater and everything. It's been really dry and you know, the skin does not like heaters So I have to have a moisturizer, but I really I, I would have resented the other stuff because <laughs> I've tried everything I've, I've tried a lot of stuff Some moisturizers are better than others But so far the Curology moisturizer is my favorite and you can only get it in a full set So unfortunately that's kind of the downside is I wish I could just buy it on its own But in terms of what I've done to combat that is I just like stretch out my Curology prescriptions to be every other order and then I just order the whole kit and it's fine. It works. Okay, the next thing that I want to talk about is Soap and Glory Body Wash. I'm not going to get my shower stuff just because it's wet. <laughs> I just showered, um, but I'll put a picture up on the screen. Soap and Glory Body Wash. I have mentioned this in one of my recent review roundups, but it is deliciously thick, creamy, um, the texture is really viscous. If you want to see a full review of that product, I recommend you go back to that September uh, reviews video. But I just have to say that that product is absolutely, absolutely fine, delicious, wonderful. Every time we bathe with it, it is gorgeous. Lather it up in your hands, lather it up in a little um, towel, like, what is it, like those shower exfoliators. I love it any way, shape, or form. Um, Another thing that I've really liked are Lush body products. So either the bath bombs or the bubble bars, though I have to say I'm more partial to the bath bombs. I don't know, I just haven't had a tub in so many years. I haven't had a tub since I left high school and that's been a long time. <laughs> I'm aging myself. But it's been a while since I've had a tub and I used to really like baths. Um, I think I just grew up on baths and especially uh, in wintertime when my seasonal affective starts to kick in. 
you know, when it's like 4 p.m. and the sun is already going down, I think one of the most self-soothing, relaxing things you can do is kind of take a bath. And if you want to take it one step further, like a ritual bath, making sure that you've got like salt and candles and incense and like soft, airy music playing in the background, you've got like your crystals all around you, it can be a whole production if you want it to be. And many times I have made it a whole production. And it, it just is, you know, really great to sit down and unwind. So part of it is the bath bomb experience and making the bath incredibly hydrating. You know, I always thought that the bath bombs were just novelty, but they really do hydrate the skin. Um, so part of it is like the accoutrement you can put together to make your bath luxurious. And then the other half is the self-care that is associated with taking a bath, drawing the bath, you know, cleaning yourself lavishly, um, setting an intention, whether that is to relax, whether it's to meditate, whether it's to read, whether it's to enjoy something. You know, I always go into a bath with an intention in mind, or maybe it's just to soak my sore muscles after a really long day, but bathing and having a cohesive, relaxed ba bath experience has been amazing for me. That has been definitely a monthly favorite. I try to do it like once a week if I can. Uh, and it's it's difficult with roommates. I mean, I have two men living with me and we all share one bathroom. So it's not super easy, but I come home from work before the other guys do. And also everyone is out traveling this week. So I have the whole house to myself this week. I will be bathing every day. It's been great. It will be great. It will continue to be great. And I think, you know, throughout winter, if you can get yourself a nice hot bath, drop a bath, you know, and, and set aside a time to really purely engage with that bath instead of, you know, just kind of like idly scrubbing. I mean, like, yeah, you don't need a bath. <laughs> um, I think in the old days, baths were used to be more hygienic or maybe it was to save water or something. But nowadays it's more just like, I, I use it as a vehicle for pleasure and for relaxation. And especially, you know, if I've had a long day or a rough day or, you know, something has bothered me, I think a bath is like one of the fastest and easiest and cheapest ways to decompress. The next thing that have been loves for me, and I don't think this is a surprise to anyone, is my Natasha Denona palettes. I have two brand new babies to share with you guys, the Love and the Retro. Both of these have been amazing staples in my collection, so much so that I've already destroyed the Love palette. The mirror is all crushed up. But um, my Love palette, you guys may have seen it, oh my god, gloss, hair situation. You may have seen in a recent video that I used this to recreate like a a brownie red lip with a really soft glossy eye and that was displaying some of the true genius of this palette. So this palette can go really really dramatic with the dark charcoal, the purples, the red, the silver, or it can be really romantic, light, airy, almost like a renaissance like pastel fresco situation because it has a lot of these light creamy duochromes that are so close to the skin texture and they radiate this like really glistening, healthy, glowy color. I think it is stunning. I mean, clearly you can see that I've had like a color scheme here with like the glowy purples and peaches and the duochromes. So that has been this palette and I've loved it. Absolutely no qualms with it so far. And then on the other side of the spectrum, the retro, which I mean, if you haven't already heard people talking about it, where have you been? It is just so flexible and so interesting. I mean, you can just do so many different things with this palette and I'm really close to hitting pan on two shades already. Um, the shade Rebellion and Opart are the two cream to powder formulas and I'm already like digging into these two. So these two colors right here are super, super handy. Let's see. Oh, can you even? These shades are just so freaking juicy. I mean, I... I mean, I have a love affair with eyeshadow. You guys already know this. It's just, it's so hard. Judy the other day was like, I wish you could have more eyes to like put on makeup every day. And I, I always agree. Like, I always feel like it is such a crime that I can only do so much makeup in a day. If I could just go out wearing two completely different looks, <laughs> um, I would. And also if I didn't feel like I was at risk of creating a million and one premature wrinkles every time I like took off my makeup, I would do it three or four times in a day. Ooh, another thing I have really been enjoying lately is MAC Ruby Woo. I will put a picture of it up here because I don't know where mine is. I thought I saw it, but it's gone. <laughs> um, reason why I like it is because it really matches my hair quite well. It is like a very classic 1950s cool toned red. Very cool toned. Um, mine is not the powdery retro matte finish. Mine is just the regular matte finish, but I think a retro matte would be absolutely delicious and very cute and very adorable. Um, but I've just really liked red lips with my whole vibe. I think because my style has changed a little bit. Now I'm really into monochromatic red makeup. So like red on the eyes, red on the lips, and then black clothes. I think reds are harder to match in clothing just because it's like a bigger piece and you know, it's just hard. I don't know, at least for me, it's hard for me to match reds to clothing, but it's easier for me to match reds to makeup, especially because the tone of my hair is going to shift a little bit every time I shampoo my hair. So MAC Ruby Woo for the month of October, as long as my hair was red, um, it was kind of matching my hair color. And I still love the pairing. I just don't know where it is. ATM. 
The next random little favorite for me is this Ardell Brush On Clear Lash Glue. Okay, so this has a caveat with it. Um, ever since I got this lash glue, I have been wearing lashes a lot more, which is a great. Overall, I think lashes do a lot to make a look quite interesting and dynamic, and I just feel like they open up the eyes. Um, even if you don't get a particularly flattering lash shape, like what's on my eyes today, I don't think it's flattering, but I do think it's better than no lashes. So I have just been really intrigued with playing around with lashes. I've been trying like the Kiss Lash styles. I tried this, um, you know, variety from the dollar store and you know what's been great is this lash glue for a couple different reasons but I will say it's not a perfect lash glue so let's go through the pros and cons. Pros are I love the container I love how it's not super gummy like the actual product itself has a very um clean clear consistency and it dries clear it is clear it does not leave anything gummy gooky like crispy crunchy like it does not leave your lashes gummy and goopy and thick which I don't know if this is latex free but like some lash glues are rubbery like they almost feel like um liquid latex you know what i mean like that sticky gooey adhesive i mean it's adhesive you know what i mean but this does not feel that way this feels like i don't know what it feels like it almost it has a texture of like a dried epoxy glue so if you guys are familiar with like uh glue for your nails or like super glue it's completely liquid at this point, so it doesn't have that like goopy, creamy texture. It's completely clear, it's completely liquid, and then when it dries, it kind of turns into like a crunchy resin, um, and it's not it's not soft at all. Like it's hard and crispy. <laughs> you might be thinking, I don't know what that implies. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, it's a good thing because it means that when you go to put on your lashes, because it's not that goopy, gummy texture, you don't have that like slip and slide situation. A lot of times when I went to go use lash glues, even if they were the brush on type, I would use a really thin layer and then I would wait, you know, a minute, set it on my lash line, and then if I like lifted my finger or if I so much as like bumped my finger against the lashes, they would like boom, boom, like slide around. It was like a slip and slide. And if it didn't, it would like, I don't know, slowly kind of cure. And the whole layer would kind of turn into like a more rubbery, flexible hold. And I just, I didn't like the flexible hold situation. These don't do that. These you brush on and then as soon as it's done, you can pretty much just adhere it onto your eyes. And it snaps onto your eyelid in the same way as like a magnetic lash. It's like bizarre how quickly it grips it's like <laughs> grips right onto your lash line you can tell you can pull it's pretty strongly adhered on here like it feels kind of like a magnetic lash in terms of how strongly it is always in the inner corner perfectly fine outer corner perfectly fine it's water resistant um so where are the negatives well the negatives are that this is kind of painful to remove because it has that crispy crunchy texture you can't peel off your lashes so normally at the end of the day i'll like i'll peel off my lashes with the liquid glue attached and because it's kind of like a rubbery texture it can kind of just like come, come off like a, like a label off of a sticker or something like that um this because it's kind of like a resiny feeling um if you try to do that you will rip out your lashes and i have ripped out my lashes the best way to remove this is with an oil you know soak on the eyes like with a pad and then slowly dissolve it off um i mean i'm sure that's how you're supposed to remove lashes but i don't know about you but i used to peel off my strip lashes um and the other problem is if you get any of the lash residue the glue stuck in your lashes like because it's so hard and you're trying to like pluck it off or you're trying to rip it off it doesn't you know disadhere easily it really has to be like chiseled off or melted off um that being said this stuff is like bulletproof and it wasn't expensive so would i buy this again yes that being said, I think I would buy this again. I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the process of wearing lashes. And most importantly, I enjoy the security of having them on my face and not falling off and being waterproof and all that stuff. Um, the next thing on my list is Simple Moisturizing Face Wash. Yes, really bizarre um, favorite of mine. I picked it up at the clearance aisle at TJ Maxx for $3.99 and I love this stuff. It is actually really amazing at removing makeup. Sometimes, um, if I'm not being very good, I will just use it twice as a first cleanser and then a second cleanser because I think it actually does break down the oils in my makeup very, very effectively. And not just my makeup, but also my sunscreen, you know, whatever else, like setting spray, all the kinds of stuff and gunk I put on my face, eyelash you know, lash glue and stuff like that, it gets most of it off. I mean, it won't get your mascara off 100%, but definitely all the layers and layers and layers of complexion stuff I have on, concealer, primer, foundation, powder, you know, highlighter, <laughs> all the stuff that I have on my face, it really cuts through all of the gunk. So that is a surprising favorite of mine because I really just needed it to be functional and it ended up surprising me. Um, and then there are some things that were fails this month in terms of makeup. First thing, Monday shampoo and conditioner. I have learned to hate that product. Uh, I never, ever, ever get dandruff, especially on day one or day two. But uh, recently, I don't know if y'all can see on my scalp, but my <laughs> dandruff has been through the wazoo lately because I think this shampoo and conditioner combo just is not doing 
anything for my scalp. Like it's not cleaning my hair because my hair is getting greasy and it's also not hydrating my scalp because my scalp is dry. So that combination of stuff, no matter how adorable, no matter how uh, affordably priced, no matter how cute and recommended, I just, I don't think I can give that brand another try or my stamp of approval. If you have coarse, uh, chemically processed dry hair like I do, I would just go for something much more nourishing. I actually find that some of the heavyweight natural hair products actually work the best for me um, because, you know, it's also like people with coarser hair, people who need a lot of hydration, lots of moisture, locking things in, things that are just a little bit more heavy duty, I love. So I think I'm going to go back to some of those brands that I know and love um, because you can find a lot of really great hair products at the drugstore. I think you just have to look for at least in my situation, I have to look for a certain category of thing. And I just can't assume that the average product is going to cater to that. Because when I read the bottle, it said for dry, de damaged, dehydrated hair, whatever, right? Um, and that sounds like it's me, right? Like dry, de 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 damaged, you know, dehydrated, chemically processed hair. But like my level of requirements for moisture and the average, I guess, like target consumer of the Monday brand we probably have very different needs um, and I just wasn't aware. So yeah, the Monday shampoo and conditioner, not going to work for me. The other thing that is a fail is my ColourPop Sailor Moon lip gloss. Um, I didn't realize this, but I have a lip gloss that is straight up yellow. It's yellow and it's ugly and I tried to go through my, you know, my stuff pretty regularly. I was wearing that gloss a couple times and my husband was like, what is on your mouth? And I don't think he was doing it in a rude way. But he was just like, what are you wearing? Um, and I was like, what? It's just this gloss. And it wasn't until I wiped it off that I realized that the gloss is not only yellow in the tube, it is literally a yellow gloss. And I don't mean a clear gloss with gold sparkles, I don't mean like a golden sheen, I don't mean like anything remotely flattering. It is straight up pastel milky yellow gloss, which obviously, yes, in the tube, you can see it. It's not a surprise. But I just think that if you're going to be wearing um, a yellow gloss, you have to be very cognizant of the fact that you are going to change the tone of the stuff on your mouth. And the worst part is I was kind of wearing it as a lip treatment. I don't know if you guys can tell, I hate lip gloss because I find that my hair gets stuck in it. But at home, usually my hair is up, up, clip back, whatever headband situation. So I don't really have the fear of hair falling into my face. And so a gloss sometimes can be a really great way to keep me from biting my lips or from tugging on them or whatever. And so I had this yellow gloss on my bare lips and it just made me look like I had scurvy or some kind of sickness. It would just like seep into the cracks of my lines in a really weird way and it straight up was just like pastel yellow and then my teeth looked really yellow and it was just a bad look. So that was a fail. Um, doesn't matter because you can't get it anymore, but it was just a funny story because like this whole time I had this lip gloss, I was wearing it over pretty pigmented, you know, like bright red products. And so you couldn't tell until I had it on my bare lips and then my husband was like, well, what the hell is on your mouth? Last but not least, uh, Pat McGrath, uh, sis, what were you doing? My husband ordered my birthday gift on like the 8th and I just got it today on the 27th. So, <laughs> uh, the shipping was really, really late. And at this point we just didn't need it anymore. So we returned it because it already passed and we went to Sephora instead because you could just pick it up at Sephora. So the shipping was a little bit of a snafu, but obviously the fail isn't personal. It's like a COVID issue. <laughs> in general, I also heard that her holiday palettes haven't been going out in a timely manner matter either so that's not really like a personal thing that is just something to report so if you are wanting to buy from Pat McGrath maybe see if you can buy from Sephora instead if you can pick up just because I know that they are very 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 backed up right now and um, even though we are pretty close to their distribution center um, it's just been difficult to get a hold of stuff hi editing me here from work actually uh, another fail of mine I have to mention is the Gucci palette that I got for my birthday and it was completely faulty and actually the eyeshadow quality itself is also horrendous if you see my video you already know because that video um, was pretty juicy and it had pretty telling examples of why that was an absolute and total fail so I have since returned that product I am waiting partially for the VIB sale and partially for my own thoughts to settle on whether I want to replace it or not because it is true that on camera the eyeshadows were incredibly blended incredibly smooth but I just I can't give it a stamp of approval right now because the packaging was 100% faulty like it didn't work at all um half the shades did kind of disappear as I was wearing them so for now we are considering that a fail is that fair it's a fail all right, this half of the video is going to be lifestyle. I can't wait to get into lifestyle stuff. Okay, first of all, I wanna talk about my look because we started with the hair look. Um, and then I wanna talk about the rest of my body. I am going through like a goth clothing phase. Um, and what's really interesting is I, I 
consumed a ton of videos on like goth culture. And when I say goth clothing, maybe I should specify by saying alternative clothing because goth is like a lifestyle and it's a lifestyle based on music, I think. Um, so I'm not like claiming to be part of that situation at all. I was just very, very inspired by like the all black ensembles, you know, having like a very particular silhouette. So I spent a bunch of time on Pinterest just curating my ideal alternative vampire vixen persona. And I took a couple steps into trying to figure out how I could make that a reality in my life. Part of the thing that has been really interesting for me is incorporating a little bit of that alt lifestyle um, and that alternative fashion sense into something that I can wear for work. Because like I mentioned before, I'm a teacher. Um, and mind you, I'm a teacher of like pretty young kids, like as young as seven, eight, depending on the year. Um, and so what has been fun is trying to figure out how I can incorporate some of these more risque, edgy, alternative pieces into a, a wardrobe that has to be pretty inoffensive and how can I balance out a silhouette. So I've come up with a pretty interesting formula. There are a couple pieces that I've really liked um, that have made this work pretty well. First of all, um, I oftentimes pair really normal typical work outfits with one or two accessories that are more bold. So up top I'm wearing a very normal work sweater but I was wearing a pair of really interesting like lace tights. Uh, not distressed tights, not you know like ripped spiderweb tights but they were just like a lacy gothic tight which I felt like was very like classical Lolita situation. It was very cute. Another thing I've been doing is incorporating more platform shoes. And so uh, I have two pairs of Demonia shoes. I have a pair of really huge chunky Oxfords. I have two pairs of Doc Martens with me and a bunch at home. Um, but yeah, I just, I've always liked a really chunky, punky shoe look. And I know that the chunky, punky shoe has been in since like the 80s. Because <laughs> my mom has a huge collection of chunky, punky shoes and then passed down that love to my sister who then passed it down to me. So it's been in the family for a long time. Uh, but for some reason, I guess when I went into the professional industry, I really just felt like I had to give up all parts of my aesthetic style for a more bland, like, <laughs> I don't know, like publicly acceptable one. And I think to an extent, I've understood that that doesn't really, like my look doesn't really affect the quality of my output. Um, and so for some reason, I understood that very intuitively with my makeup. Like I never was super conservative with makeup because I knew that like, what does this have to do with how I teach? Um, and it's extended to hair and now it's extending into clothing. So I'm like dipping my toes into a little bit more of exciting clothing. So platform shoes, um, started by hiding them under maxi skirts, but now I just straight up wear my six inch demonia platforms and it's fine. And I haven't heard a single person say anything about it, um, positive or negative, And I don't care. Um, other thing is jewelry. Other thing might be like having layers of stuff. So having like a lace shirt underneath something else or having like a lazy cardigan over a dress. Um, textures like velvet, uh, you know, paneling, pleats. You know, I've just been trying lots of different interesting ways to dress and that has been a very fun process. It's almost like a, a puzzle, figuring out like what pieces to keep classic, what pieces to keep pretty inoffensive and then what pieces I can kind of like push the silhouette a bit or pu push the texture or you know is there a way for me to incorporate a little bit more edge to this a little bit more edge to that without kind of tipping the scales in any one direction because I still want to be professional I just want to be like professional and cool you know like a little bit aspirational for some of the kids um so that has been definitely a favorite of mine is you know kind of trying on different things also in terms of style and accessories I just have to mention a couple one, I recently found a cropped, fluffy black coat. Now, if you know me, I'm not a big jacket wearer. I just like to tough it out in the cold. I just think it makes me more rugged. I don't know if it builds character or whatever, but I just, I can't be bothered with outerwear. But one day I was walking around Salem and I found the most adorable coat. Let me go find it for you. It is like a, you know, a fake, a fake polyester, you know, like fur, faux fur coat. Um, and it's from the brand Sweet generis generis i don't know how to say this um but it has this like adorable fluffy hood and the best thing about it is it's cropped so the reason why this was really important to me is because one i find that a lot of times the coats that you get um for winter time especially if they're warm they tend to be like the puffer type or their wool and they're very very fitted um and i didn't want either of those i didn't really want a tailored coat and i really didn't want a puffer coat um and i wanted it to be cropped and i have both of those things i have like tailored coats and i have puffer coats but i didn't have a black kind of loose soft coat that could go with some of my more gothic inspired outfits without kind of either making it very sporty and utilitarian or very classy and you know um feminine and traditionally tailored you know what i mean uh, and i think this one kind of suits the mark really well it's it's not particularly casual in the sense that it's like sportswear but it's also not so formal that it feels 
stuffy and very classic and so it was a really fun like meet in the middle situation the only thing i don't love is that the zipper is silver and not black but also it was a pretty affordable coat it was i think 40 bucks which is almost nothing in terms of outerwear and um i like it a lot it's so soft it's so warm because it's polyester and it traps all my body heat inside and i couldn't be more obsessed i've worn it for basically like a whole week straight ever since i purchased it and i adore her she is amazing the other thing um are the demonia platforms i have two now <laughs> i i've mentioned them before the one are the camel 300s and another one is the shaker 72s those have been in my daily rotation a lot. I mean, obviously the thigh-high latex shoes have not been a staple in my work routine, but definitely on the weekends. And the other ones have been amazing for work, just because I can hide them underneath a skirt if I want to, or I can have them out and about in their beautiful platform glory. Another one is my evening routine. Uh, so this is something that kind of fell off the wayside because my husband started traveling. And in that midst of kind of like reacquainting myself with living alone, being with a roommate, trying to get to know each other, um, my evening routine changed a bit. Before that, I was pretty regularly doing a meditation practice at night just to wind down before bed. And I'm not like here to sell the meditation thing at night because I know everyone has heard about meditation and like what it does to the brain. I too was like really turned off by it. <laughs> but I, what I will say is having a time to decompress at the end of the night away from social media and away from other people honestly has changed the game. I have never gone to sleep um, feeling light and then woken up refreshed. I feel like there's, for me, Every time I've woken up from sleep, it's always been like a, an ordeal to wake up, you know? Unless I happen to wake up at a really good time, my alarm usually would wake me up and then I would have to like physically muster up the strength to get out of bed and especially when it is still dark outside and I'm exhausted and, you know, it's cold and all that stuff. But having the evening routine, I think, did something to my brain that allowed me to, I don't know, take care of my circadian rhythm a little bit better. Like, not having my phone out, not talking to people until, you know, the minute I was trying to fall asleep. Having just a little bit of time to decompress. And for me, that looked like meditation and reading and, you know, reflecting on my day. But whatever it is to you, all I can say is having a decompressing nighttime routine I really understood the value of that once it was removed from me because then I could see empirically like okay that negatively impacts my morning in this capacity and in this way and recently I've gone back into using my regular nighttime routine and it's not super long it's like 40 minutes and um, frankly at first I thought it was a bore to like do it but now that I've done it and I've seen the, the benefits and the the way that it's changed my life I look forward to doing it it's not like a drag anymore so that has been something that I really enjoyed is is I don't know like trying something new removing it from your life and realizing, oh yeah, that new thing did actually bring value to my life. It's not just something that I imagined up. It's not just like a phase. Okay, two things really quickly. Obviously, I have to mention Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing and Smash Ultimate. Smash Ultimate for Sora and Animal Crossing for the update coming on November 5th. By the time that you guys are watching this, November 5th may be around already. If it is not, uh, I don't know, go look up the direct or something if you are not aware. But just saying, Animal Crossing uh, New Horizons is about to get insane insane i mean i cannot imagine what it's going to be like future me if you're watching this is it everything that you imagine it would be because the whole world uh animal crossing world is exploding right now and so are you so i have been very very into games lately um another thing i've been into uh weird thing but the elderflower uh liqueur from I don't know the brand. I will list it here. It's a French brand. You can get elderflower liqueur at any grocery store, any liquor store that sells spirits. You can probably find this. If you are a child, this is not for you, but if you're an adult person who can have an adult beverage, this is amazing. I love this stuff. It almost feels a little bit like lychee. If you like lychee, it's very floral. Um, it's got a lot of top notes. It's got a lot of sweetness, almost has a little tropical flavor. It is like the best perfume turned into a juice and it tastes exactly the way it smells. It is fantastic and I like it with a little bit of Sprite and lemon juice. Sparkling water is good, on its own is good, on the rocks is good, mixed into other stuff is good. Um, yeah, I just, I've, I mean, I'm trying to not sound like an alcoholic, but I did go through a whole bottle in a week, which for me, as someone with like, maybe an alcohol allergy <laughs> um that's a lot of drinking for me to do but i really enjoy the stuff and obviously i share it with my my roommates too but it is delicious that is definitely a hard recommend last but not least three different types of teas i've been drinking elderflower tea uh peach hibiscus rooibos and also dream blends of teas so the first two are kind of like not super important if you are in the Massachusetts area, you can get into Salem. Artemisia Botanica has amazing bulk teas that you can purchase for very, very reasonable prices. Honestly, like criminally low prices. And I find that a lot of the shops in Salem can stay afloat. I mean, I know all the shopkeepers at this point, like on a personal level, um, but a lot of the shopkeepers 
don't mark up their prices at all because they get so much foot traffic that they can sell at cost and, and not really suffer for it. Um, but yeah, there's a, a ton of amazing, amazing teas sold at Artemisia, Artemisia, and one of my favorites from there are the elderflowers and the peach hibiscus teas. Those are great. Um, but in a general sense, dream teas, the entire category of dream inducing tea or dream enhancing tea or <laughs> dream clarifying sleepy time tea like that whole genre of tea and i don't mean the tea that you can get at the grocery store but i mean like specialty tea that you buy from other countries whoa that stuff is good <laughs> we have tried a couple um some of my favorite are like there's like a blue flower that i really enjoy um there's a blend that this artemisia botanica store makes in-house that's I don't know, it's been in the works since like the 70s and they've been selling it ever since. And there is this tea from Mexico called like Kalia. Um, it is disgusting, like truly maybe one of the worst things I've ever tried in my life. But if you get a hold of that stuff, um, the amount of vivid dreaming you can get is pretty incredible from there. So that has been a fun thing. I've been doing that pretty much every night. And again, it's part of like the evening routine that helps me slow down, wind down, decompress before the end of a really long day. And that way I can slip into a very fun dream. And I wake up and I feel refreshed. It doesn't feel uh, like I was punched in the head with a brick every morning because sometimes it do be like that. All right, that is everything. I am out of words. Like my throat is tired and I need to go get a drink and take a bath. Uh, I hope that this is coherent and usable. I feel like I've been talking at you guys for an hour and it's been long and arduous and trying. But with that being said, guys, I think that is everything. I love you a lot and I will see you again in the next one. Bye.